Good morning, Jordan here. It's day two. Welcome back to the warehouse project. And today we are going to be fitting the cabling, connecting in all the sockets, the free phase and the single phase sockets, and connecting everything into the distribution board. All the cable tray got done yesterday, so I'm really pleased with how that went. And today we're just going to jump on and start pulling in some armoured cables. So I'll show you around. So this is all our cable tray that we've put in all the way around. And basically today what we're going to be doing is chucking in the cables from the DB, running them along the cable tray. So we've got three circuits going in, two for the 32 amp sockets, two radials basically um, with four mil five core cable. So the first one is going to go from this board to the first three phase socket, then across to the second, then across to the third. That will be the end of line. Then the second three phase circuit is going to go to that socket over there then to that one over there, and then finishing up at that one over there. And then we've got one 32 amp radial for the 13 amp sockets, which again is leaving the board in four mil three core armored cable. And we're just gonna go in and out of all our 13 amp sockets all the way around. There are nine 13 amp sockets in total, three on each wall. Um, we've done a little, we've kind of done a bit of prep work. So we've got all the sockets and everything mounted on already. And yesterday I did a little test for the cleats. So we're going to be running obviously two cables down here. So we're going to be spacing them sort of 20 centimeters apart, which is probably a little bit over the top, but actually I think it will look quite neat like that. And I wanted them to line up together. So when we do the cleats for this three phase socket, it will be lined up. Um, so it'll look nice and neat. And basically we'll just jump over the edge of the cable tray, drop down into the socket, come up and jump back onto the cable tray with all of these. So we've got to drill all the fixing holes for the cleats, run the cables in and then cable tie them. Obviously along here, we're gonna need metal cable ties. So we've got some of those to go in. And what we've done here in order to get through these holes um, in, the, in this sort of steel structure, it's just thin steel, uh, we've put these 50 mil holes in with male bushes and lock rings. So that will enable us to take the armoured cables through nice and smooth, no damage to the cables, and then they'll just go into the top of these boxes like that. So <clears throat> gonna jump on the time lapse and start pulling in some cables. As always, if you like my videos, hit a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Let's jump in. Right, so a little progress update for you. So we've started to get these cables in now and uh, glanded into the single phase sockets. As I mentioned in, in part one, we're doing quite a close spacing on these, but I think it looks really nice and neat. So I'm quite happy with the spacing on that actually. Um, and then what I've been doing to mark these holes up, because there are certain spacing in order to get the two cleats butted up to each other. I've been using my Weha electrician's level. So this is the electrician's level. Now I, I was gonna make like a jig for it and then I suddenly realized that if I just change the spacing on these spacers, I can actually space it out the exact distance between the cleats like that. Uh, and then use my marksman to just mark them up. So that's been brilliant. And then you can get them level. So what I've been doing, if you can see it there, see my green line laser. So I, I do that in the center of the box. Then I make a line every time I need a cleat. So these are about 20 centimeters apart. So I just do a pencil line every time I need a cleat. And then I literally go over that line um, obviously with the line laser still in the center and get it level and then just mark these two holes with the marksman 
that leaves a nice little green dot on the wall and then you can just drill all where the dots are. So it makes it quite accurate to actually measure up the holes and uh, get them all level and do the, mark them up really quickly and, and neatly. Uh, over here, Andy's been busy getting these cables in, so that's all cabled up now, all the way around. As you can see, what we've got is these 50 mil um, bushes with a, a lock ring on the other side. Obviously, you need to get rid of all this swarf, but um, yeah, that just enables the cables to come through nice and clean, and also it means that we can gland them uh, and the glands will pull through the holes if needed. So it just gives a bit more flexibility. I was going to do two small holes, like 225 mil holes, but actually I thought that's not such a good idea. Let's do one big hole and that's worked out quite well. So this is the first one on the line. So we've got five core cable now to run from here all the way along there and into the DB. And then that will finish off the cabling for that furthest three phase socket circuit. And then we've just got to do a cable from that 13 amp socket to that one, from that one to that one. And then that's the 13 amp socket circuit wired up. And then we've just got one more cable from the DB to do these three, three phase 32 amp commando sockets. I've made a little bit of a mistake here because I forgot that this was the end of line. So I've actually drilled two holes in the top and I've, I've drilled and plugged two sets of uh, fixings, but actually we won't need them, we'll only need one. So we'll just put a, a plug in there to seal up that hole, and then we'll leave the cable coming in on the right-hand side so that if they ever need to extend further on from this, then the hole's already drilled and it's ready to go, and they can always run another cable from that to somewhere else if needed. And then in terms of the lining up of the cables, what we're gonna do, so we're going on this side, all the way round and the single phase circuit is starting here then the furthest three phase circuit is starting here and then the closest three phase circuit is starting here so that the cables can follow a continuous line all the way round and they don't cross over each other the advantage of the not crossing over each other is that if you need to remove a cable later on and replace it with a new one, you can remove that one cable without having to untangle it from the other cables. So that's quite important really. A little bit of planning on cable tray goes a long way and enables you to do a neater job and something about cable tying which I'll show you in a bit is I'm a bit OCD about cable tying. Like the cable ties have to be exactly spaced the same distance and they have to be the same way round each time. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but um, I, I just think like neat cable tying is, is absolutely essential. So Andy's got, done a good job here anyway. They, were, they are um, all neatly tied in, so evenly spaced, so I'm happy with that. But um, on that last bit, that's gonna be the, the funnest part to cable tie, because we've got three cables basically coming all the way along there. So I'll probably give you some footage of me doing some cable ties along there so that you can see what I mean. Anyway, it's 10 o'clock, time for a coffee.
one of the things I'm really kind of OCD about is cable ties. A uh, few little rules of cable tying. So cable ties should always be the same spacing apart wherever possible and they should always be the same direction. What I mean by that is you can do them that way or you can do them that way, right? And if you mix it up, it just doesn't look as neat, so you should always keep them the same direction. So for these ones, we've got spacing of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So every seven, so we'll do one, two, three, five, six, seven. We'll put another cable tie here and we'll put it the same way around. If you cut them with a knife, you cut them smooth like that. If you cut them with uh, side cutters, there's always a little bit that sticks up and it's sharp. So if somebody else pulls in another cable later on, then, or they just touch a hand on it, they can cut their hand because they're quite sharp when you cut them off with side cutters. So I always cut them off with a knife. Or the best thing you can use, which is a guy who I worked with in South Africa taught me this, this Swedish guy who was absolutely obsessed with cable tray and cable ties. Um, he taught me that if you use a pair of garden shears, like the little secateur kind of things, you can get those right up against it and they'll cut it off absolutely smooth. Uh, I should have a pair with me on the van really, but I don't because I don't really do that much of this kind of work. Four, five, six, seven. But um, yeah, just a few little bits. You know, it's, it's probably silly and it's a little bit over the top, but I think if you give attention to the small things, then you show that you care when it comes to the big things too. And, um, you know, it's little things like this. Attention to detail is really important. So for me, these tiny little things add up to an amazing quality job. And that's what it's all about, taking pride in your work. Right, so I've got everything cable tied up now along there. Obviously we've added metal cable ties every so often, steel ones just to uh, comply with premature collapse in the event of a fire. So that's all good. Obviously that's not needed on the top of the steel cable tray because if there's a fire it's not going to go anywhere. But um, everything's starting to come together nicely now. We've got sockets all mounted on the wall and everything kind of dressed in neatly. We've just got these last ones along this end to do. Um, this, that side is done already. So it's just these last ones on this end. So Andy's busy connecting those up. Um, what I'm going to do now is start at the board and just start terminating these three armoureds into their new circuit breakers. So we've got a main isolator here and what I'm going to do is just turn the main switch off at the DB so that isolates everything in the DB and then I'm going to turn this main isolator off here. Now obviously I'm going to do a, a check to make sure that it is actually dead and safe to work on following safe isolation procedure. And then um, gonna start terminating everything into this board. Right, so we've got these armoureds terminated in here now. And then uh, what I'm going to do is put these, um, what we call earthing nuts on. These are absolutely brilliant things, absolute time savers and create a really good solid connection for the sheath of the armouring onto the earth. So these literally just screw on there like a normal lock nut. But then you've got these threaded holes which you can then put a screw into and a ring crimp and then you can run a flying lead from there down to the main earth terminal here. Um, I mean you don't even really need to do that technically because it's a metal 
uh, box, you can literally rely on the earth of the casing uh, as well. But sometimes it's nice to do belt and braces. Um, in this case, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. It depends how easy it is to get a flying lead on once I've tightened the lock nuts. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to get those on and then get these cables stressed into the circuit breakers. As, this, as you can see, we've got two new three-phase circuits in here. Slightly annoying that this one looks slightly different to that one. It's sort of like faded. Obviously, you know, I bought these at the same time, but the writing there is different to there. So maybe they came off a different factory line or something like that. I mean, th they do the same thing, but it's just slightly annoying that they're both brand new, bought at the same time, but they look slightly different. And then we've got a 32 amp RCBO here for the um, 13 amp socket outlets. Obviously we don't need RCBOs for these because the sockets, the three phase sockets have got their own individual RCD built into them. And the cable is just clipped direct onto cable tray. So it doesn't need RCD protection for the actual cabling. So yeah, I'm going to get these on and then start connecting everything up. So a little update for you. It is 34 degrees outside and inside this warehouse it feels like that hot or even hotter. Um, so sweating like a pig now, but we're nearly there. Uh, cables are terminated into the distribution board, so that's all good. Sockets are nearly finished, so we just got uh, one single phase and one three phase socket left to connect. And then we're there. It's now half past three in the afternoon, so we're on track to be finished about five, which is not too bad. I was hoping I might have a little bit of an early finish today, but no such luck because one of the customers who I've been working on where I did that smart lighting job a few weeks ago uh, they just called me to say that air conditioning isn't working <laughs> it's 30 40 degrees <laughs> and I, I changed the thermostat uh, moved it around last week because there was some renovation work going on I had to move it out of the way and I think it's possibly got wired the wrong way around or something so I've got to go back there and sort that out at about six o'clock on a Friday evening in 34 degrees heat, but that is my life. Anyway, the weekend is nearly upon us and uh, hoping to get a bit of a break soon, so that'll be nice. And anyway, gonna finish up here and I'll give you a final tour. Right, so just to prove that electricians do clean up after themselves, this is called a Poindexter machine and uh, it's used to magically clear away dust. Okay, and what, see it's already got some in, that's because I've already used it. So I'm going to use it even more now. Watch. You know, uh, uh, I was on, um, on the Tools live show the other day and one of the questions that came in was, why is it that electricians never clean up after themselves and they always leave little bits of uh, coloured cabling everywhere? Well, I was highly offended by that comment because I always clean up after myself. And uh, the one time that I didn't, I actually gave the lady a discount so that she could pay a cleaner to come in and clean up for me. And the reason I didn't clean up was because I had to catch a flight and if I was gonna take the time to clean up, I would have literally missed my flight. Otherwise, I always clean up after myself. And I think that's another sign of taking pride in your work. <coughs> so there we go. And I'm going to get the hoover out now because we've made some kind of uh, footprints on the carpet, just dusty footprints on the carpet through there. So I'm going to actually get my hoover out and hoover up there as well. Right, guys, we are done. Oh, man, I'm so relieved. It is literally 34 degrees and I am sweating like a pig and completely exhausted but it's just nearly five o'clock and everything is in all we've got is a little bit of testing to do just got to do r1 and r2 on the sockets rcd test and then we're good to go basically so really pleased with the result it looks nice and neat as you can see um everything's connected in the board all we've got to do is just 
do some tests, um, and then we can liven it all up, and then a bit of clearing up, just get rid of all this stuff. By the way, let me know if you're like a college or something and you want a load of bits and pieces. There's all these cantilever brackets left over and the uniclip joiners. I don't know if they're of any use to anyone. There's a length of cable tray, well, a couple of lengths of cable tray and bits there. And then there's some bits of cable as well left over. Um, bits on, on drums there as well. I've got quite a stash of armoured cable now. So if any colleges uh, would like some for your learners, please contact with me with some kind of official proof that you are actually a college and not just a scrappy or something. Um, and I'll be happy to help out and donate that to you if you can come over and pick it up. Uh, but yeah, all good. We've got um, ferrules on these connections as well. We've used the earthing nuts here just to link between the armouring so that we've got continuity on the armoureds. And um, yeah, really kind of pleased with the result. And if I show you up here, you can see the actual um, cable tying. Uh, it's, it's definitely up to my standard. So I'm quite pleased with how the cable tying went all the way around. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video today guys, as always if you have give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and by clicking the notification bell you'll get notified every time we post a new video. As always thanks for watching, I really appreciate all your support. If you'd like to support the channel further and be part of a monthly live stream where you can ask me questions, uh, go to my Patreon page, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.